While we were filming last season, we came across a critter that was kind of terrifying. Um, well, it would be if it was human-sized, something maybe out of Stranger Things. So today we're going to have a look at one of my favorite creepy creatures. Those rather bizarre animals are called sea spiders or uh, pycnogonids, but they're only distantly related to the land spiders. It's an entirely different group of arthropods, actually. But in the intertidal zone, we actually do get both groups of organisms. We get a few land spiders that have moved onto the shore, and then we get these marine sea spiders or pycnogonids. So let's go and see if we can find some. Land spiders that have moved down into the intertidal have had to adapt to living in seawater. So what they do is uh, they take a limpet shell and they glue it onto the underside of a rock and then they have a little air bubble in there. And when the tide comes in, they retreat into the air bubble and then they're in the little diving bell there and they wait until the tide goes out again and then they come out and hunt. So we've been turning over some rocks and here's a rock which has a nice spider nest inside it. I can actually see the silk there. And there's the spider. Only a few true spiders have managed to move down into the intertidal zone and you can recognize them because the head and the thorax are fused together and then there are four pairs of legs that come out to the sides and a pair of very large sometimes jaws at the front. So all spiders are predatory. And then they have a large round abdomen which has the silk glands in it and the guts and the reproductive organs. So those spiders uh, are air breathing. So when they come down into the intertidal, they have to have a little diving bell to live in when the tide comes in. And when the tide goes out again, they can emerge and then they hunt for their prey. And the prey of these spiders is little isopods and amphipods, which have quite a thick protective coating, a thick shell. So they have enormous jaws. And in fact, the species name of the spider is Formidabilis, the formidable sea spider, and it has really quite scary jaws. The land spiders that have moved into the intertidal also lay their eggs in this little silken nest, and then the eggs hatch out into tiny little baby spiderlings. And interestingly, there's actually a flightless wasp that lives in these little silken nests and is completely specialized on laying its eggs on the spider eggs and parasitizing it. So it is by far the most ultimate specialized habitat. And in fact, that wasp is only known from this very one site. It can't move to other sites probably because it doesn't have wings and it can only feed on the eggs of this one species of spider. So it's really sort of evolved itself into a, a very tight corner. These intertidal spiders can actually survive quite a long time underwater if they fall into a rock pool or they get trapped suddenly when the tide comes in. And they do this by having a layer of very fine hairs all over their body. And when they get in the water, that layer of hairs traps a layer of air. And that layer of air, then they can breathe from that layer of air. And the oxygen actually diffuses from the seawater into the layer of air and then into their lungs. So it's like a little aqualung that they're using there and they can survive quite a few minutes underwater like that. Thanks for watching Explore the Shore. We noticed that most of you who are watching our channel aren't actually subscribed. So please hit subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything and simply means that our videos will show up in your feed and it makes a big difference to us. Subscribe and we'll keep making awesome videos like this one freely available on YouTube.
sea spiders that you actually find in the water are not related to the true land spiders. They're pycnogonids, they're another group of arthropods, and their only resemblance really to land spiders is that they have four pairs of very long legs, and they're both a little bit creepy. The body is quite different though, so the body has a very small head and a four-segmented thorax and a tiny little abdomen. And from each of those thoracic segments extends a very long leg. And those legs move very ponderously and the whole animal moves very slowly, like a tortoise or a dinosaur plodding along. They can grow to quite an impressive size, so some of the deep water ones have uh, a leg span of 30 centimeters. So they must be quite scary to have in your bed with you. And they feed mostly by plunging the proboscis into soft-bodied animals like sea anemones and slurping out the insides. They also have a very interesting mode of reproduction, a little bit like seahorses, in the sense that the female lays the eggs and then the male gathers up those eggs with a special pair of legs that he has under his thorax and he carries them around until they hatch. So you'll see the males carrying these two big baskets of eggs, two big masses of eggs under their bodies. So they're pretty bizarre animals. Okay, so sea spiders walk in a very ponderous way, like a, like a tortoise. So this is, this is sea spider walk, and it's at about this speed. So they move very slowly, so that they actually don't need gills. They just get enough oxygen by diffusion over the body surface because they use so little energy. And then they got a big proboscis. <laughs> Hit subscribe if you want to see more Explore the Shore.